All right, cool. We got Friday night at the Stone Church. So we got a good night ahead of us. I'm always very happy to be back at the Stone Church. I love the Stone Church. The Stone Church has been in my musical path for many, many years. My first gig ever was, my first official gig uh, was here at the Stone Church uh, when I was 20 years old, which was over 30 years ago now. <laughs> And uh, I played here a few times in between now and then, a couple anyways. Um, so yeah, it's good to be back here. It's a great place, you know. We're pretty uh, psyched to be able to ha still have the Stone Church, you know, open for music and everything, especially with everything going on. And, you know, there was a time period when we were worried we we're going to lose the church, you know, and it's, it's, it's a community and it's people that love music and it's people getting together and it's, you know, people stepping up and making sure that we still have a place, you know, where we can get together and come together and listen to music and be cool, you know. So I'm pretty psyched about that. I'm pretty happy. It's a great place. Great place. Everyone feels the vibe, right? Yeah. All right. So this first song. <laughs> so I did, I've, you know, during the lockdown and stuff, I've done a, a couple of streaming shows, you know, through the TV or whatever, the computer stuff, and the ones and zeros, and uh, um, it got, you know, it's weird when you do a streaming show um, without an audience, you know, and, you know, if you're doing it in your living room or whatever, so I got these, <laughs> I put these, <laughs> these things together, and I just thought they were funny, you know, so I brought them with me tonight, so we'll have a good time, we'll have a good time, so yeah, this first song is called Another Day, it's the first song I actually wrote on this bass, uh, I didn't even know if it was possible, um, you know, I'd never done it before, you know, but I, I don't know how to play guitar, I've never played guitar, well, I mean a little bit, you know, like a bass player knows how to play guitar, but I'm a bass player, so I wanted to figure it out, and I, I worked on this song for a while, and finally came up with something, I was like, oh, that's cool, and I'm like, wait a minute, is it cool, <laughs> you know, like, is it cool, because like, I'm a bass player, I like it, but I don't know if it's cool or not, so I asked a few people, I was like, check this out, and they're like, yeah, it's cool, man, it's all good. Don't worry about it. So, anyways, if I play it and you don't think it's cool, so it's their fault, not mine. <laughs> All right, cool. So, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. All right, another day. I want to know Do you want to stay or go? I don't care either way Feels like just another day I'm alright, just alright Stay a while Why don't you smile? Where you're going to? It's 3 a.m. and there's nothing to do. Look around, what do you see? It's only you and only me. I'm alright, just alright. Stay a while. Why don't you smile? Tell me your name Take a chance and play the game I don't know what to do Just want to get to know you I'm alright, just alright Stay a while Why don't you smile? I don't care either way 
feels like just another day I'm alright, just alright Stay a while, why don't you smile? Why don't you smile? There you go, that's another day right there. Thank you. That song and the next song I'm about to play is on this, there's a seven inch record inside that. And uh, <clears throat> we got these songs, I recorded them a while ago. Hold on one sec. Thank you. Anyways, um, yeah, so if you like that song, and I'm, gonna, I'm about to play a Neil Young song, if you like that, so you check that out, and you like that, and you're like, that's cool. Um, so you can grab the record, and you can take it home, and if you have a record player, you can listen to it. <laughs> if you, if you, you know, you like that kind of thing. Or just hang it on your wall, um, and just think about listening to it. <laughs> or just, you know, just forget about it altogether, and be like, It'd be a memento from Friday night at the Stone Church. Anyways, uh, this Neil Young song, I really like most of what Neil Young does, you know, and uh, this, is, this was one of my favorite Neil Young songs. And again, it was, it's back when I was figuring out how to, you know, actually make the bass a solo instrument, you know. And this song, um, I was like, oh, I'll try that, you know, let me see if I can make that work. And I like to approach, you know, so I approach anybody else's song, well, even my own, I guess, as a bass player, you know. So I approach it, and, I'm, and I try to, like, take it apart. I, you know, like, I want, but I, I want to carry the essence of that song out, even though I'm doing it in my own voice, you know. So hopefully that's what comes across. You can check it out, and you can decide for yourselves. Um, I'm not going to tell you the name of the song. Because I like to see if people can figure it out. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously I have to play it first. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's try it. Whoop, that's not it. That's, uh, that's my favorite part right there. The hang, you know? You hear that? <laughs> I say that every time I play the song, literally. Like, every time I hit that chord, I'm like, oh, that's my favorite part. Even if I play it at home. I don't play it at home very often, but I did recently just to make sure I could still play it. And uh, I, went, I hit the I did it. Well, not that one, but I was like, that's my favorite part. And... Uh, yeah, my dog just was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, if you like that song, you like the first song, you grab the record, and if you don't have a record player and you don't want to hang it on your wall, both these songs have been recorded at another time too, and they're available uh, on a six-song EP 
Um, I, you know, it's all this self-promoting, whatever, but I, I just want to get the music in the hands of the people that want it, you know, and now, you know, so now you just, whatever streaming thing that you like to use, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, you know, we don't, like, pick sides, everyone's, it's fair, everyone can use whatever they want, so you can listen to that if you like it, that's cool, you know, but if you're like, yeah, man, I really like that song that you did, that Neil song, but I don't want to steal from Neil, you know, and I can respect that, I appreciate that, but you won't be, because I have a license, it's legit, and whatever streaming revenue you generate by listening to it, <laughs> Neil will get most of it, <laughs> you know. I don't know if they write checks for like less than 10 cents, but whatever, he'll get it <laughs> somehow. <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah, that's cool. Um, So, we're gonna keep going with this capo here while we got it going. Um, All right, cool. So this next song is called "The Story." Uh, it's it's a it's a story that I wrote. Um, so I called it "The Story" because um, usually by the time I get done writing a song, uh, I don't really give a shit about the name, and so I just grab you know whatever. It's like a story. It's, all right, I call it the story, you know. So and for me, the name is not the, the you know the work and the energy. You know, the song does is what it's supposed to speak and explain itself. You know. I mean, I appreciate when people like to spend a lot of time naming something, like their kids or whatever, <laughs> you know, that's cool, but, um, you know, by the time I get to the end of the song, like, done, finished writing it, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, so I call it the story, and there, you'll see that throughout, uh, as we play some more of my songs, the names we kind of obvious, I guess, I don't know, pretty much. Um, so this, this is, um, I don't really have much to say about it. I mean, there's two, there's three types of songs that I, I write, you know, and um, one of them is that, lyrically, li lyrically, like one of them is that it's made up bullshit, <laughs> and the other one is that it's based on some sort of real world experience, and then the third one is, is like a combination of both. Um, and so this one, as far as I know, well, I don't know, I'm not, I probably shouldn't tell you. You guys figure it out, <laughs> if it's real or not, if you want. Or, I mean, if you're bored, you're like, yeah, I'm kind of bored, not really sure what to do. Well, you can listen to the words and decide if it's bullshit or not. <laughs> okay. Rookie was afraid 
nanny shopper. That's when things got a whole lot worse. Girl named Sue shot in the heart that just ripped the boy's world apart. I saw you standing there, nothing to do. You and me will always be free. That's my story, maybe it's true. Take my hand when I give it to you. Yeah, so I don't know what you think, true, bullshit, or real? What, what, uh, any, any takers? Anyone? No? You think it's, yeah, Scott said that's bullshit. <laughs> it is bullshit. I made that shit up. It's totally bullshit. But when I say bullshit about a song I wrote, like lyrically, it's not so much that I'm making shit, well, I am making shit up, but the point is to like compliment the mu like to fit with the music to to get an overall sense or a vibe or a feeling or some something so like even if it's made up you're like well it feels right you know maybe so maybe that happened maybe not you know but um originally when i wrote that song it, it was a lot longer there was a lot more character development you know you really got to know sue and the boy and even the rookie cop you know we got their backstory and we really got to understand where they were coming from and their motivations behind things. And it just got really long and boring. So I cut it out. Right? It's better that way, right? <laughs> All right, cool. All right. I think we can get... Oh, so we got a... Um, hmm. Let's see how this goes. This is going to be interesting. Give me a second for a minute. All right, sorry about that. Sometimes you gotta urge, you know, like, help the capo, like, like, like encourage it to hold the strings down correctly. <laughs> I like to have good relationships with my musical equipment. <laughs> this next song is a Bruce Springsteen song. And I know we've already talked about how I approach other people's music, so we don't need to go over that again, but I will just reiterate you know, like I like to take, I'm not a Bruce Springsteen fan. I'm not, I don't really like most of his music, but I do like this song. Um, and I respect the dude, you know, and he's like, uh, he's always got a big ass grin on his face, you know, so he always seems pretty happy. He seems like a nice guy, not like Neil Young. Neil Young always seems pretty grumpy and pissed off, which is weird. I mean, I don't know either of, the, either of those guys, so I, I can't really say, but um, you know, and. You know, born in the USA, I thought it was cool, you know, because, you know, like the whole protest thing and, you know, people didn't pick up on it. And I was like, that kind of gives him a little more credit than you would just by looking at his face, you know. He'd be like, yeah, whatever. You know, but then it's like, oh, he's got some, you know, he actually has, you know, and I saw a documentary about him too. And uh, I don't remember any of it. It was probably pretty boring. So I don't think there's a lot going on. But I don't want to judge, you know, I don't want to judge if, you know, He's a great singer, he's a great songwriter, you know, for a lot of stuff, you know. Um, so this song I like, and um, it's called I'm On Fire. Um, I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> this one always gives me, um, this one likes to play with me a little bit. It likes, it likes to like change stuff up on me. So recently I, I did change, I tried to, um, well, you know what, that's not important. What's important, is that we're all having a good time. We're gonna give this the best chance we got. All right, how's it go? Hey, little girl, is your daddy home? Did he go and leave you? Got a bad 
bad desire. That's not working. I knew it. See, it, I shouldn't have done that. We're going to do it different. The important thing is, is when something doesn't go right is to recognize it fairly quickly. You know, you guys have all been experienced that, you know, whether it's music or what have you. But then not to like play up on it, like you just downplay it. You don't like make a big deal out of it, you know? <laughs> hey, little girl, is your daddy home? Did he go and leave you all alone? Alone. I got a bad desire. Oh, I'm on fire. Now, baby, is it good to you? Does it do to you? Things I do, I can take you higher. Oh, I'm on fire. Sometimes it's like someone took a knife, baby, edgy and dull for six inch valley in the middle of my skull. I wake up with the sheets soaking wet and a freight train running through the middle of my head. Only you can cool my desire. Whoa, I'm on fire. Whoa, I'm on fire. Whoa, I'm on fire. I took a little artistic license on the last bit. If you're familiar with that song, hopefully, you know, it's important to like speak, you know, your own voice through other people's music if they let you, you know. So while I was playing that song, it occurred to me why I don't like Bruce Springsteen that much, um, which is probably why I screwed the song off because I wasn't really paying attention. But um, when I was a kid or, in, or teenager or whatever, um, what was I saying? Oh, so in December, the radio stations would play the E Street Band doing Santa Claus Coming to Town, like, like nonstop, like all throughout the whole December, like this song, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, you know? It's like, hey, Clarence, what do you want for Christmas, you know? It's just like over and over and over again, you know? And I just got so sick of it. It was terrible, you know? Hey, Clarence, <laughs> you know, like, I want a new saxophone, you know? Like, okay, man, shut up, <laughs> you know? It's just annoying. So I think that turned me off of the boss, you know? I think that's what it was. So it's good to be able to pinpoint these things, you know, find the source, you know. Luck, I haven't heard that song in a long time. I hope I never hear it again. So there's some crazy stuff going on in the world right now, without a doubt. We all know that. I mean, you don't need me to tell you. you don't, I don't really need to point it out to you. But maybe there's, a, there's one thing that you weren't aware of, is there is a space hurricane happening over the North Pole, or happened, or it's already happened over the North Pole. It's like, um, it's invisible to our, we can't see it, but like this weather, the satellites or whatever picked it up. And it's basically this massive amount of um, space clouds, I guess, or whatever, but and it's not, but it doesn't rain water, it rains neutrons. So just neutrons just come flying out of it. It's like a toll, and it's got an eye and everything. It's like crazy, you know? It's like literally, like one more, this, the world is going, I mean, for, what's a space hurricane? What is that? That's crazy. Like everything is going topsy, -to like it's, it's, you know, I mean, and Texas, right? With their deep freeze, you know? It's like a little, you know, they got ice and, you know, low numbers, you know? I mean, you know, right, it's a little ice. It's like, yeah, so, you know, okay, <laughs> whatever, but. You know, I'm, but that's not, that's callous of me. Like, I felt for that. I've, 
I really fell for him, you know, like single digits, you know, no power, you know, like they were cold, they were really cold, and I felt for him, and I, I, that was hard, you know, so, um, I mean, granted, if we was here, we'd just pull our generators out, start them up, and be like, get back inside and watch TV, you know, no big deal, but whatever, Texas. But the point is, the world is doing crazy stuff. Is it the world, or is it us? Well, we didn't make the space hurricane, so obviously, and neither did the world. I mean, the space did, you know. <laughs> what is space, anyways? What is in between everything, right? The reason that came up, the reason I thought of that is because this next song is called Hurricane. It's not, a, it's not about a natural disaster. Um, but it's, it's um, well, I don't know if I should tell you whether it's real or not, if you guys want to figure it out on yourselves, but I wrote this, I wrote the music and it was pretty, the music was done, but I, ha I didn't know what to do for lyrics, you know, so I'm like, I don't know, what, you know, whatever. And I dug, for some reason, I dug into this text back and forth between this woman I knew, and there was this one period of time where it was like super heated and, you know, she was just super, anyways, I, I was able to pick and pull out all these great one-liners from the text from this woman. So that's how we put it together. And it still tells a pretty good story. It's just pretty funny to think what she was saying. I don't know. I get a kick out of it. But, you know, you never know where you're going to find your next insight. <laughs> Let's do Hurricane. How does it start? How does it start? All right. Waiting game is here to stay. Shall I take it and run away? Or should I keep it out of thing? Should I come on one of these days? Outweighs the pain like a diamond in the rain. I've been gone a long, long time. Reserve resistance is all you'll find. Living with the hurricane, living with the hurricane, living with the hurricane, living with the hurricane. Part of my life. Here to stay, shall I tell and run away? Or should I keep it out of bay? Just come out one of these days. Living with the hurricane, living with the hurricane, living with the hurricane, living with the hurricane. You're part of my life. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's, a fu that's a fun one. We got a little... Got to get up tight in there. So, 
Um, next song uh, is actually a mishmash. That's, I don't know, is that a word? Uh, when, you, when you jam two things together, what, is that, what does that make it? Who's, who's it, what? Concact, wait, what? Oh, I can't hear anything. <laughs> All right, so whatever he said, so I took two songs and I jammed them together and they became whatever that, I, I, I believe, I trust that he's saying the right thing, I just can't hear. <laughs> um, maybe, yeah. Um, so we took, we're gonna do some Johnny Cash, right? Because, <laughs> well, of course, <laughs> right? Like, of course we are. It's uh, Friday night. Um, we're gonna take a Sun Recordings era song and jam it in with uh, an American Rick Rubin era song because they're both great songs. So the first song we're gonna do is Cocaine Blues, which is a great song, uh, but we're not gonna do the whole thing because it's really long and like, he just goes on and on. It's a great story and he does an amazing job telling it and everything, but we're gonna bail in the middle of it so we can jump ship and jump over to the Devil's Right Hand, which is on, originally Devil's Right Hand, it's actually a Steve Earle song. Um, and then the Highwaymen did it, which is Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson, maybe? Who else? Who's in the highway? I don't know. I don't remember. Oh, yeah? So they did Devil's Right Hand, too. But then Rick Rubin had Johnny Cash re-record it on, uh, what record was that? Anyone? Anyone? Um, I forget the name of the album, but it's really good. It's just him and a distorted guitar, and it's really cool. And when I heard it, I was like, oh, shit, I got to do that song. That's a great song. So I do it my way. So I basically, I'm doing a cover of a cover of a c cover of a cover of a cover. I'm covering a cover of a cover. Uh, something like that. You know, but it's good to see the path of a song, and we're going to get into that more as we continue our night. But uh, before we do that, let's just roll out this Johnny Cash stuff and have a good time doing it. Um, so yeah, just give it a shot. Shot of cocaine and shot my woman down. Went right home and I went to bed. Stuck that loving 44 beneath my head. Got up next morning and I grabbed that gun. Took a shot of cocaine and away I run. Made a good run, but I run too slow. Overtook me down in Warwick, Mexico. Deep in the hot joint, taking the pill. In what the sheriff from Jericho Hill. Say Willie Lee, yes, I Jack Brown. You're the dirty hack that shot your woman down Said, yes sir, my name is Willie Lee You got a warrant, just read it to me Shot her down cause she made me slow Thought I was her daddy, but she had five more About the time my daddy went to fight the big war Saw my first pistol in the general store In the general store when I was 13 Thought it was the finest thing ever had seen Asked if I could have one when I grew up Mama dropped a dozen eggs, really blew up Really blew up and I didn't understand Mama said the pistol is the devil's right hand Really blew up and I didn't understand Mama said the pistol is the devil's right hand Devil's right hand, devil's right hand Mama said the pistol is the devil's right hand Captain Ball cold, shoot his guys at lightning, but a loader might slow, a loader might slow, and I soon found out, it can get your trouble, but it can't get you out, then I went and bought me a Colt 45, called a peacemaker, but I never knew why, never knew why, and I didn't understand, mama said the pistol is the devil's right hand, never knew why, and I didn't understand, mama said the pistol is the devil's right hand, devil's right hand, devil's right hand, mama said the pistol is the devil's right hand. Into a car came in a cup town Caught a minor cheating and I shot the dog down Shot the dog down and I watched the dog fall Never touched a holster, never had a chance to draw Try was in the morning and they drug me out of bed Asked me how I pleaded, not guilty, I said Not guilty, I said Got the wrong man, nothing to judge a drinker But the devil's right hand 
guilty I say, got the wrong man, nothing does the trigger but the devil's right hand, devil's right hand, devil's right hand, nothing does the trigger but the devil's right hand. There you go. All right, cool. This next song is a song I wrote a couple years back, uh, and I, uh, it's, um, I'm not going to tell you if it's real or bullshit. You guys figure that out. Um, or not. I can, maybe I'll tell you late. Uh, late it's whatever. Um, we'll see what happens. But anyway, I wrote this song, um, yeah, a couple years ago, and I totally forgot all about it. Uh, I think there was something about it that was bugging me, and I just kind of like you know, just tossed it or whatever. And then just recently I was digging through some old notebooks and shit and, um, and I found it and I'm like, oh, oh I remember this. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was like, what was wrong with that song? Like, why did I ditch it, you know? And I played it and I realized it, it just needs to have, it needs like, it needs to find its like groove and its vibe. It has a good vibe. It has actually a really cool vibe to it. But if you don't hit that vibe, then the song is like, eh, whatever, you know? So you really gotta like get into the zone on it, you know? And there's a part of it that like it really works really well. And I think if I can get that to happen, you guys will probably dig it, you know? But if I don't, well, whatever, <laughs> then, then I, you know, you maybe you'll know, maybe you won't. <laughs> I don't know. It's called Five Years. All right, let's give it a shot.
You came just in time, because the next song is Carry Me Home. So this next song is called Carry Me Home. It's, uh, it's on that six song EP I was talking about. If you're just getting here, I was talking about a six song EP. And uh, this song is actually one of the ones on it. It's, uh, it's available through the streaming media services that you, you know, choose. Uh, whatever one you like, it's, it's on there. Um, you know, basically just ones and zeros just flying through the air, flying through space, flying through air, it's invisible. You know, but they're not a bit. They're, go they're literally going right, right now. Everyone's phone is like ones and zeros going right through us. Like just shooting right through us. Tiny little particles. It's amazing, you know. Quantum mechanics just blows, boggles the mind, boggles the mind. You know, they came up, they literally got a photon, a little light particle. I hold it like, like it's this big. It's not. It's so small. Like, it's invisible. You know, it's smaller than, but it, they basically got it to go back in time. Literally, what happens at the quantum level, if you're not familiar with it, is it just doesn't follow the regular physics laws. Like what happens, what, you know, what we do at this size level, you know, there are no rules down there in the minuscule world of quantum. And they literally were able to get a particle to go back in time, like time travel. Like time travel, it's like a real thing. Like it literally happened. I mean, granted, the part, it was like a nano of a nano of a nanosecond. But it still happened. <laughs> Whether time is, you know, it's not a question of how much time. It's a question of, yeah, it's, it's bizarre, you know. It's really bizarre. So anyways, we got ones and zeros coming out of our stream and things. And if you choose, you can select this song to be what you want. You know, like somebody's ones and zeros might actually be this song. Probably not, though. <laughs> Probably not. I have a funny story about that, but I'm not going to get into it. Well, I guess I could. I don't know. You guys split? All right, see you later. All right, what's the name of the song? Carry Me Home. Cool, let's do it. Drink all night, act like an asshole and get in a fight They call me crazy and that's alright This is what I do every day and night I don't know why, just get me high Leave me alone, carry me home Call her sugar baby, she's the girl of my dreams 
But she says she doesn't know what that means When I ask her if she will be with me Tells me that I can have the first one for free I don't know why, just get me high Leave me alone, carry me home Jesus Christ tells me he knows this because he died twice. I put a twenty dollar bill in his shoe. Now I know that Jesus Christ loves me too. I don't know why, just get me high, leave me alone, carry me home. Alright, cool. So I'm just gonna take a short little break and we're gonna come back and bang out another set, alright? So don't go running, don't go. Well do you know what? You don't I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I could, <laughs> you know, and I it would be a test to see like how many people would do it. I guess it would depend on what I'd say. Or would it though, you know? Drink beer, have fun, drink what or other drinks, fancy drinks, and uh, I'll be right back.
All right. That was a good time, huh? Everyone have a good break? Yeah? Take advantage of the... I don't know. What would you label it? much to say about this next song, but um, all right, we, we had a lot to think about after our, le our discussion from the last set, so uh, let's just roll into some music and sort of feel, you know, lay back and just enjoy ourselves and not think too much about the ones and zeros zooming through us. We didn't belabor that point all night long. <laughs> this first song is... Uh, is actually the first track on that six song EP we keep talking about. Oh, there's the ones and zeros again, too. Jesus. <laughs> Can't get away from quantum mechanics, man. It's just everywhere. It's everything. Everything we do. You know, beer. How do you make beer? Well, that's all quantum. That's all from the quantum level, you know? All those molecules. Anyways, so what? <laughs> uh, this first song is called Retribution. <laughs> And uh, like I said, it's on the uh, it's on the EP. It's the first song. It's uh, it's also got there's a video I made for it too. Um, I don't know if you guys like watching videos. Sometimes some people find it easier to watch moving pictures while they listen. Um, it gives them something to focus on. So I like to provide that uh, when I make a song. I usually do a video with it. In this case, the video is pretty well. It's hard to describe really. No, actually, no, it's really simple. <laughs> it's me just playing on the couch. Anyways, I really like this song. It's, uh, it's, been, it's one of the early songs I've had with me for a long time, and it's a staple, and it's a good time, and I feel pretty good about starting the set with it, so let's lay back. And I, gotta, I have to make sure I chill out on this. I don't want to get too excited, because then I really start beating on this thing, and we lose some of the, the feel, you know? And we, instead of hearing the notes, you just hear me banging away, you know, which will happen later, but hopefully not just yet. <laughs>
So, one of the bands I don't listen to anymore, but when I was a teenager, man, I don't know, I don't want to time travel too much, but uh, this band's called The Beatles. Um, they have a bunch of cool songs and stuff, and there's one of the songs I was like, oh, I wonder if I can play that on bass, you know? And uh, we're gonna find out in a minute. Um, you know, the Beatles are an interesting group, you know? Like, Paul McCartney, to me, is like probably one of the biggest enigmas going, you know? Like, he just, uh, he just doesn't seem like he's, he just seems a little too happy for me, you know? And, uh, but he's an amazing bass player. Like, he's an amazing bass player. He's really good. Like, he's got a lot of, he, like, that dude can, like, he's got a lot going on. And, uh, but, like, his songs are terrible. Like, all this, you know, like, Love Me and love, all that crap. You know, like, uh, I'm not, I'm more of a John Lennon guy myself, you know, and this is, this is a John Lennon. Um, well, I mean, they both write every song, but, you know, you can tell who does what, you know. And, uh, we're gonna give it a shot now. Um, yeah, but again, I gotta put, I, you know, I don't know how many times I'm gonna say this tonight, I'll probably stop saying it pretty soon, but, you know, when I, when I listen to a song, I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool, I like the, you know, I wonder if I can play that, you know, and I keep saying that over and over again, like, cause what happens is, you know, pretty much, you can play any song on bass, you really can, like, or I, you know, I think I could, you know, but that doesn't mean that you should, <laughs> you know? I mean, as a solo instrument, obviously most songs need bass, you know? It's what keeps me in work, you know? <laughs> but um, some songs, you can take songs and, so I approach them from, uh, as a bass player, you know? I'm not a good, I think a guitar player is gonna approach it differently than me, you know? Um, and I would, you know, I'm not really a guitar player. So when I approach it, I think of it in a way how I can, you know, uh, speak that song uh, from from a bass as as a bass player, you know, and and will it still carry that essence of the original song? Like, is it still cool? You know, like if you like the song, do you still like it? You know, with its new sort of variation going on, you know. I mean, you've already heard, I've already played a bunch of other people's songs so far, so you know what I'm talking about. You know, maybe some worked, maybe some didn't. You know, it's hard saying. Well, no, it's not hard saying at all. It's actually really easy. You either liked it or you didn't. <laughs> it's not complicated. Or sometimes there's gray area. I'll give you that. All right. So I'm not going to tell you which one it is. It's off a of rubber sole. Um, and it's not drive my car, whatever that thing is. I don't know what that is. That's weird. <laughs> it's a great band, though, you know. They really did. I mean, the... The cre what they created by doing what they did is, is bigger than what they were. So think about that for a minute. And I'm going to play this song while you do that.
There you go, Norwegian Wood. Um, I read somewhere, I think I read this a while back. I think I read this. I don't think I heard it. I don't think I, you know, I, back when I would read about stuff, um, that that, John Lennon said that that song was uh, a confession to his first wife about cheating on her. Uh, so maybe that's true, maybe, I don't know, that could be true. But the other thing is, when I was a kid, Norwegian wood was slang for hash, which made a lot more sense to me, so I stuck with that one. All right, are we still doing the, um, maybe it's real, maybe it's bullshit thing? I got a song coming up here that is completely different than all my other songs. Completely different, very different. So that might excite some of you. <laughs> Maybe. Um, yeah, exactly. I know, I know. So this one is, uh, I wrote this, I don't even know why or how. It, like, it's one of those weird things. But it's, it's, a, it's a beater, though. Like, it's, it's a good one. Like, it, it takes, it's a, it's a workout um, playing it, and, uh, but it's, a ha it's, it's like a happy song. And I like happiness. I think it's great when people have that. You know, I try to spread that whenever I can. So I'm going to try that right now, see what happens, you know, see if you guys catch on. <laughs> Anyways, if you do get a chance to check out, the, like I said, if you're bored, you're like, oh, I don't, you know, it's cool, but I don't really know what to do. You can listen to the lyrics, and then you can decide, is this real or is it made up? All right? And I'm not going to tell you. I mean, if you guess, I'll tell you whether you're right or wrong, but... That song cracks me up. That's a good time. <laughs> That's funny. Anyone got a guess on that one? Real or not real? That's a good guess. That is a good guess. That one, it wasn't a fair question because that one is actually both. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where like a certain event happens and you're like, oh, you know, and you, write, you start writing a song about it, but then it, it sort of takes on its own path, you know? So I was like, yeah, you know, spinning 
on the beach and then drinking and, you know, all kinds of stuff happens. But thank you for guessing. That's cool. All right, we're going to take, we're going to get, we're going to switch. We're going to do a complete 360. No, nope, that would put us back where we started. We're going to do a 180. Which way are we going to go, though? Clockwise or counterclockwise? So this song is um, a little more down, it's a quieter song, which we're probably all ready for at this point, after that last one. Um, you know, enough banging away. <laughs> um, anyways, this song is called Take Me Away. It's a weird song for me because, I mean, I really like it. It has a certain vibe to it that's different than my other songs, and it co sort of wrote itself, if you know what I, I don't know if you know what I'm saying when I say that. Basically, I, it just happened. It just like, all just happened. Words, music, everything just went blah. And I was like, whoa, that's wild. That's, you know, it's, it's done, you know? Like, which is weird, because usually you gotta like push something here or there, you know, to fall into place. Uh, but in this situation, it just sorta, which makes me wonder, you know, because the subject matter, like, the sub it's about loss. It's about losing someone you really care about, you know? And um, I don't know why, like, I don't understand why I would write a song about that. I don't really have that going on in my life, at least right now, you know? I mean, um, so it's weird. It's almost like, I don't want to use the term channeling. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to, but you get the idea. This is, you see what I'm sort of getting at, right? Like, I didn't really, did I write this or did somebody else, you know? I mean, I've seen ghosts in my days, you know? I've seen them peeking around the corners, you know? I'm usually stoned when it happens, so I'm like, ah, whatever, that's nothing, you know? But, you know, maybe not. Maybe they're writing songs through me now. Yeah, that's really arrogant and egotistical. <laughs> so that's not what happened, but <laughs> it's good to think about it, you know? Um, that perhaps I speak a, a voice from, from beyond. No, I don't even want to do that. Like, what? That's ridiculous. That's silly. So anyways, let's get back to the song. So the song wrote itself, so that's great. But it's about loss. It's about losing someone you care about. But it takes it one more step, and it questions whether or not you uh, have a continued connection with that person after they're gone. Now, I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, but uh, it's something to think about. Or not. Or just, you know, drink your beer and...
But now she's gone And I'm all on my own Why did she have to go? Why was she taken from me? Only one thing I know Life is hard without you Take me away Thank you, thank you. Ah, uh, thank you, Tiffany. All right, this next song is a, a really funny song. Like, not ha ha, but this guy, um, I was racking my brain why I learned this song. Like, some reason it got played recently, not that recently, but yeah, fairly recently. I had heard this song in the movie Juno, or in the, whatever, uh, and so when I heard it again, and I don't remember why I heard it again, I was trying to figure it out, because I definitely didn't, somehow. But anyways, I thought to myself, well, that's a funny song, I should do that, you know? It's really funny. Um, it's, it's actually pretty, I don't want to use the, this, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not even gonna, you don't need me to tell you what it sounds like. You're gonna hear it and you're gonna figure it out on your own. <laughs> Anyways, this guy, Barry Lewis uh, Polis, Polisar, I wrote it down because I can't remember. I had to look it up. I was like, who wrote that song, you know? Barry Lewis Polisar. He is um, a well-renowned, respected, like extremely successful children's author. <laughs> Those are burning up in my pocket. Um, he's a well-respected and well-known children's author and does children's songs, too. So I'm like, oh, shit. That's... So he's, he's a good guy, you know. Like, um, he, you know, he's 
pretty established and is very talented. And so this song, again, like I said, was on, in the Juno movie. Um, so that's uh, where I first heard it. And it's, it's a, it's, you, it just makes you just go like, oh, ha, ha, you know, and not ha, ha, it's not. You know, what, I keep, I'm doing it again. I'm trying to explain to you what the song sounds like. Well, you're, you're about to hear it, so you don't need me to tell you. Um, so I'm just giving you my, what I think, which, you know, for whatever that's worth. I mean, it's good for me, but not necessarily for you. The other thing about this song is, and I'm really not sure I'm going to do it tonight, is I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not, you know, I consider myself a bass player and a singer secondary. Like, I don't, you know, I, I don't, when I think of myself, you know, like, if you ever be like, hey, describe yourself, singer is not really one up there in terms of what I would use to describe me. Um, and this song starts out different than I've ever done before, ever. Like, completely different totally different. Like it starts in a way that I would never do. It's, and it's, you know, it's, I'm telling you something about myself. I, I should just be cool and be like, yeah, whatever, you know. But yeah, so this is first, this is a first, if I do it, it's a first for me. If I was a flower growing wild and free, all I'd want you to be my sweet honey bee. If I was a tree growing tall and green, all I'd want you to shade me and be my leaves. If I was a flower growing wild and free, all I'd want you to be my sweet honey bee. If I was a tree growing tall and green, all I'd want you to shade me, be my leaves. All I want is you, will you be my bride? Take me by the hand and stand by my side. All I want is you, will you stay with me? Hold me in your arms and sway me like the sea. You were the river in the mountain tall. Rumble of the water would be my call. If you were the winter, I'd know it'd be the snow. As long as you were with me when the cold wind blows. All I want is you, will you be my bride? Take me by the hand and stand by my side. All I want is you, will you stay with me? Hold me in your arms and sway me like the sea. If you were a wink, I'd be the nod. If you were a seed, well, I'd be the pod. If you were the floor, I'd want to be the rug. And if you were a kiss, I'd know it'd be the hug. All I want is you, will you be my bride? Take me by the hand and stand by my side. All I want is you, will you stay with me? Hold me in your arms and swim me like the sea. If you were the wood, I'd be the fire. If you were love, well, I'd be desire. If you were a castle, I'd be your moat. And if you were the ocean, I'd learn to float. All I want is you, will you be my bride? Take me by the hand and stand by my side. All I want is you, will you stay with me? Hold me in your arms and swim me like the sea. All I want is you, will you stay with me? All I want is you, will you be my bride? Take me by the hand and stand by my side. All I want is you, will you stay with me? Hold me in your arms and sway me like the sea. 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 Right? Was I right about that? It's a funny one, isn't it? It's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that Juno soundtrack is pretty interesting mix. I don't know if you guys ever checked that out. You know that you probably don't even know the movie I'm talking about. Um, it was, um, it was a, it was a indie sort of movie. It was cool. Yeah, you guys saw. It. You know what I'm talking about, right? So, there's like on the soundtrack, there's, a good, there's some good shit. There's like uh, Buddy Holly. There's a Buddy Holly song on there, and I know this because like when I went to learn it, I pulled it up in Spotify. I pulled up that soundtrack. You know, and that's cool. They, it's like every day. It's a quieter one. It's not one of his rocking ones, you know. And then there's like the kinks on it, you know, which I'm not, I don't give a shit about the kinks. You know, like Ray Davies, like, he, Ray Davies is not a tough guy. Like, he just talks like he's this tough guy. He's English, like, so maybe, you know, I'm sure there's tough English guys, but, you know, he's not one of them. He was a pioneer in the distorted guitar. He was the original distorted. He, like, took a razor blade and cut his speakers so it would get to be the distorted sound. And then an American came along and invented a distorted guitar. <laughs> you know, it's like, dude, you don't have to wreck your speakers, man. <laughs> Idiot. Anyways, I'm not a Kinks fan, you know, Father Christmas, whatever. 
<laughs> I'm tr- you know what? Tonight, I, just, I told myself I would not be judgmental, and I would not judge, you know, and, like, speak my strong opinions. I would be open to, you know, so maybe if you like the Kings, then I'll give them another shot. <laughs> what song should I do, though? Come on, Eileen. No, wait, is that's not them, right? <laughs> What is they? They did one, right? What was it? Uh, doesn't matter. Yeah. The old ones, right? Yeah. All right, I'll learn one for my next show. I'll have to see if I can pick one that Ray Davies isn't bothering me. <laughs> That's his name, right? Sunday afternoon. All right, cool. Write that down. Oh, it's on video, so I'll, I'll, I'll remember. All right, so this next song is by a guy named Philip Roebuck. It's another, it's another different one for me. But I've been branching out lately. Like I just did this weird children's song just a minute ago. <laughs> I don't know. I like that. That song's fun to play. I had a good time with that. I don't know. I'll sing it. I'll play it for my grandkids, you know. They'll love it. They'll be like, yeah, whatever. Whatever, grandfather. (laughs) Um, Anyways, I don't want to digress into my personal life. But um, this next song is by a guy named Philip Roebuck. Uh, He's a banjo player. He's like a, he falls into the one-man band category. Uh, He you know, I don't know the guy, and I've never met him, and I've never seen him live either. I had, I had a chance. I, well, I actually didn't find out until after the f- show, so I, didn't re- so I didn't really have a chance. I missed it. But um, he usually has, like in the videos, he has like a kick drum on his back and like a tambourine, like in his knees or whatever, and maybe something, and he plays banjo. So that's like a one-man band. I, my kick drum. That's my kick drum, so maybe I'm a one band band too. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm a one person. Oh, so we didn't. I was going to mention about the Juno thing, but we already passed it, so. Um, yeah, we'll skip that. So. Um, Philip Roebuck, so basically he did this song. Someone played this for me many years ago. A woman played this for me. It's called Baby Can I Keep You? And I didn't get it at the time, but when I was practicing it, I'm like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, well, no. <laughs> um, anyway, I, it's a joke. I, I'm kidding. She's a very nice person, and I just wasn't paying attention. That's all. Um, but anyway, so it's very heartfelt. It's very, uh, he's got a lot of uh, soul in it. He's got a lot of feeling in it. So hopefully I can do it justice, you know, and like represent, you know, because he does a great job. And if, if um, you know, you guys should check, you should check him out. You know, he's, a, he's, um, he's got some good songs and he's a great banjo player. And this song, like I said, you know, moved me, like, well, moved me, but it, like, it made, it's kind of stood out to me just because of the way he sings it. He's just... He's very soulful, and uh, it just moved it. So I don't know if I can duplicate that or anything. Um, I'm not sure if the... Well, we're going to see. I, I mean, we'll see. I'm going to try my best to, like, you know, represent as best I can. It's... All right, it's called Baby Can I Keep You. Clean your head back to kiss. 
favorite band. Oh, let's take a drink break for a minute. All right, we got this. All right, we're going to need that for the next song. So I am a, a big Led Zeppelin fan. That's one of the bands I really like. And the reason for that is mostly because John Paul Jones is just a phenomenal bass player. Like, in every way, you know, like, he just, he just holds down the songs, like, he just does, and, but he does it while he's, you know, wh you guys know what I'm talking about. So, I just really like uh, Led Zeppelin, I like, you know, and Jimmy Page is an amazing guitar player, like, just a great songwriter, you know, and comes up with, um, you know, between, you know, and it's like, they came out at a time when you, you know, you just had all these crappy English bands playing this shitty blues, you know, and like doing nothing with it, you know, and Led Zeppelin came out and they blew everyone, like they literally were like, yeah, we'll take the blues and we'll like smash it. Like literally they were so, like they have the riffs and the heart, like, and John Bonham, you know, John Bonham was just like massive, you know, um, you know, so they really showed everybody how it was to play you know, rock and roll, you know, and before that, it was just, you know, shitty blues bands, you know, and uh, like, you know, I'm being judgy again, I can tell. <laughs> Anyways, so I've always wanted to play a Led Zeppelin song. I'm like, is there, is it possible for me to play on a s acoustic bass by myself a Led Zeppelin song? Maybe, of course, like I said earlier, like, you know, you can play any song really if you want. Um, What's that? Warming up. Warming up. Yes. Yeah, let's warm up. What song do you want to hear by Led Zeppelin? You can. You have to guess the right one. <laughs> There's only one. Well, I'll tell you this. So, so when I went to listen, House of Holy is one of my 
one of my favorite albums. I really like that album. So I went to, you know, learn. I was like, yeah, maybe I can do the ocean, you know. Right? Um, but no, like, so as we talked about earlier, yes, you can play it on the bass, but it doesn't, if it doesn't work as a song, you know, then it's, you know, you have to know when to say when and be like, nope, it's not working. So I was messing around with the ocean and yeah, you know, it's like, nope, it's, it just wasn't working. It just wasn't cutting it. So as I listened, you know, but the album kept going and this other song came on and I'm like, oh, yeah, that, let's pick that, let's play that song, you know, that's a cool song. So I'm gonna do that, um, but to make it more interesting, I'm gonna tell you, to make it more interesting, so I've been playing it for a while, but this, during the lockdown, I basically tried to tweak it up a little bit and I took an intro from another well-known um, Led Zeppelin song and I smashed it in the front of the song and then in the middle where the guitar solo is, I took a guitar solo out from a different song and jammed that in there too, just to mix it up, you know? And I'd be curious if anyone can figure out all three. I mean, I would, it'd be great if you could, because then I'm doing a good job, but <laughs> I think the, you know, I don't, you know, when, I, we do, when we do the guitar solo, I see if you figure out, because, you know, Jimi Hendrix phrasing is quite unique. Anyways, that's my two cents. So let's let's see what happens when we when we play it. See what let's just uh, just take a minute, get ready. <laughs> Along the open road Many times I lie Many times I listen Many times I wonder How much there is to know Many dreams come true Some have silver lining I live for my dream and a pocket full of gold Thank you. 
the man. You know that he's been missing many, many men. You see the open road. Penny is the word. Only keep you guessing. Guessing about a thing you really ought to know. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that song. They, but you know, clearly. So I, uh, when it comes to interpreting, yeah, I really like that e ending. You know, because their ending takes like 20 minutes. You know, and I'm not gonna do that. You know, and so I had to like sort of jam, squish it in. You know, and I think it came out pretty good. I, I like it. So yeah, that's cool. Well, I kind of butchered the solo, so I don't expect anyone to guess that. I really, I kind of butchered it. It's all a heartbreaker. It's a heartbreaker solo. In theory. It is, actually. There's no for no, but it's, it's all in the phrasing, you know? Oh, right. So that's the thing. So John, ba John Paul Jones, John, like, John, those guys are amazing. And Robert Plant, like, I will never sing like that like that guy's amazing so it is my interpretation of the song like cause just because of the singing no i don't i don't have falsetto everything i have is real and it's not very high <laughs> All right, cool. So we got one more coming up uh, for, before we take a little break, and then we got a bunch more after that. So don't go too far. Um, so I shouldn't have said that there's one more. Damn it. All right. There's more than one. There's like a shitload more. <laughs> we're all going to have a good time with all of them, but uh, we're going to have a, like a little bit of a smoke nicotine break in after this next one. That's what I meant to. That's what I meant to say. So, nicotine is good for all of us. It's, it is one of the most addictive drugs out there, if not the most addictive drug. That's why I like it. That's why I like it so much, you know? <laughs> because I'll never get rid of it. All right, anyways, let's not talk about, you know, that stuff. That's ridiculous. Um, did we talk about the planet, the far out planet? I don't know if we talked about that. So a couple of years back, like three or four years, maybe five years ago, scientists and astronomers found what they believe. Well, they were right. They the further, what they believe was the furthest planet ever. Like it's the most farthest planet away from us ever existed, like way on the edge of what we can see. And they called it far out planet, which was like, all right, well, that seems like you could do better. but. Um, so then recently, just in the news not too long ago, the, I don't know if it's the same scientist, but scientists was found a planet that's even further away. Like, so now they found one that's even further than far out planet. And in all their wisdom, they named it far, far out planet. 
I think that's, I think they can, you know, they have no imagination, these scientists, you know. Well, okay, good point. They found the planet. And because of that, it's because they can dream past the universe. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They do. But they don't know how to name their planets. Far, far out planet. That's, come on. I'm not taking anything away from them. Like, I think it's phenomenal that they found this thing, you know. And how they measure, what's even more phenomenal is how they measure the distance to that planet. Like, how do they know it's the furthest one? Because they have made a zillion mathematical equations that, with light speed and all that shit and realize that that's the furthest one for now. But the thing is, the universe is expanding. You know, the universe continu continually expands. We're getting further away from all our other galaxy cousins. Like, we, it just continues because the B Big Bang blew everybody out and it's still moving out, you know? And I'm not bullshitting, it really is. Like, measurements that are made from distances, like they are, not much, it's like, you know, an inch or whatever, but in, in terms of, a, you know, a planet's age, you know, in a, in a million years, they'll be like a two feet away, you know, they'll be grown two feet, you know. So, um, so that planet's going to get further and further away. That's what they should call it, further and further away. <laughs> All right, this next song is, uh, is a song I wrote uh, a while back. It's about... I'm not going to let you get, you, do you want to guess if it's real or fake? Because I'm about to tell you. It's about a woman I knew. And I'll tell you, the name of the song is Tragic, so that pretty much explains what the relationship was like. She's, she's a good person, though. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I haven't talked to her in a while. I don't know if she knows I have a song about her called Tragic. Let it lie. <laughs> I, yeah, I agree. I agree 100%, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good song, though. It's a, it's a good song. Well, I, you know, we'll see. Let's see how it goes. Um, all right, cool. We're going to use the kick drum on this one, too.
All right, cool. So I'm going to take a short break. We talked about this earlier, so you should all be, you should be on board with this. So anyways, uh, but we have a bunch more songs we're going to play, and uh, hopefully you guys are having a good time. And if, uh, what's that? What's that? Oh, I know. I say we, you know. I'm, usually my dog is right here. <laughs> so when I say we, that's, thank you for catching me on that. Normally I'm with my dog. So she's, she's always with me. So uh, I tend to say we. That's my, I'm not crazy. So it's, <laughs> that's what I say. No, but no, seriously, though, I was going to bring her tonight, actually. Um, she really, she hangs out every time I play. She hangs out. She just lets, chills. You know, she's very animated. She has her own opinions. Like if I, you know, we're talking about judging the Kings. Or she has her own opinions about that stuff. She usually rolls her eyes at me a lot. Um, but I didn't bring her because sometimes some of the loud noises bother her. So I thought that would be best. We. Oui. <laughs> Thanks for calling me out on that. <laughs> No, it's funny. I like that. I, I like that. When I say we, it's like a collective. It's like me and all. Yeah, it's the royal. Exactly. It's a. All right. I'm going to take a quick break. Thank you. Uh, for, and we'll be back.
I was driving over here. This is on the radio. Who can get, guess the song? Oh, it's so quiet. Yeah. All right, you don't need to guess. <laughs> Who guessed? The police. Back when Sting was cool. I'm so judgmental tonight. I literally am like railing onto everybody. <laughs> so this song I wrote during the lockdown last year, almost a year ago. Is is it April yet? Is, is it? It's not April. It, it's early March, which is like the worst time of year ever, really, because it means. Here I am going again. Let's be positive tonight. Let's, let's take it. You know what? We're almost into April. It is what, you know, the universe will provide when we say what we want. And what, when we say negative things, then negative things happen to us. You know, no, that's not always true. It's not our fault <laughs> when shit, bad shit happens. Anyways, I wrote this song. April of last year during the lockdown. It's, it's a new, it's an interesting song for me because I wrote it with drums and I, it's the first time I've written um, uh, doing this solo thing with drums. And so that was a, a, a new experience for me. Um, and it, I realized, it basically made me realize that I don't usually play in time or, <laughs> or like most of my shit is and we're like changes time signatures all the time. So I had to change that for this song. We have to, we're gonna be straight ahead, straight, good and steady, nice and solid and normal one, two, three, four shit. So uh, if that doesn't mean anything to you, it's okay. Cause you're gonna just pick up on it anyways. All right. The song is called Baby and Me. There's also a video out there for, like I said, it's, it's, it's in the streaming world, ones and zeros flying through your face, and uh, there's a video too, which is streaming too, I think. So, all right, let's give it a shot.
the night Baby, in the night and the sun is gone You and me, baby, till the break of dawn I said, baby, play in the night I said, baby, play in the night Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Thanks. That's a it's a it's a weird one for me. You know, it's like um, it's more. You know, I'm not gonna get into it too much. I think we've touched base on that song enough. Let's move on. <laughs> um, yeah. I got a note here, and I can't really read what it says. It I hope it's not important. What does that say? Oh, you out, Jack? Cool, man. It's great to see you, dude. Thanks for coming out tonight. Um, what a good guy that guy is, huh? You guys, everybody know Jack? He's a great guy. If you don't know him, you should. Yeah, Joe's here, too. We'll take Joe. That's cool. Thanks for leaving. Thanks for leaving, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good night tonight, huh? It's good to see old friends. You know, that's the great thing about the Stone Church, you know, is that you do see old friends, you know, and, uh, and new friends. Old friends and new friends. You put them together, and what do you get? <laughs> I don't know. All right. This next song is called um, No One Knows. And recently, somebody told me that that's the name of a Queens of the Stone Age song. And uh, I think that's, that's a bummer. You know, I'm a huge Caius fan. I'm, I love Caius, you know. I, I just think they're amazing. But Queens of the Stone Age just doesn't do it for me. I think Josh Homme is a total tool. <laughs> I don't like him at all. I really don't. So this is not, a, and I'm doing it again, aren't I? I'm, I'm judging. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, he kicked some woman on the stage right in her chest, you know? Like, enough of that crap, you know? Like, be a man, you know? I got, yeah, Josh Homie. We don't like to talk about him. But so someone ruined, you know, so the song's not ruined because it's still my song. It's not a Queens of the Stone Age song is my point. Uh, even though I guess it has the same title, which I didn't know at the time, you know? I just don't understand how he was in Caius, you know? It just has never made sense to me, you know? <laughs> anyway, it's called uh, No One Knows. It's a song about, um, I don't know. It's, um, it's, well, if you listen to the words, you can, you can do the guessing game and decide whether it's real or made up. If it happened, or it didn't. And then, and if you, you know, obviously nobody has the length of concentration to pay attention to a whole song. <laughs> if you forget what you're doing, and we can talk about it afterwards. You and me are meant to be, you and I will never die. What's your name? I have to know. Come with me after the show. We'll go away, away from me. Our lives without fear Just say yes, it's time to go 3 a.m. and no one knows Our life together begins tonight You know it's true, you know I'm right You and me are meant to be You and I will never die We'll go away, away from here Live our lives without fear Just say yes, it's time to go no one knows. No, 
the show and I have to go It's okay, I won't be long We'll find the time to be together Like I said, together forever We'll go away, away from here Live our lives without fear Just say yes, it's time to go 3 a.m., no one knows Tell the truth, you want to leave, you have no love, you don't believe, I understand, I'll say goodbye, I won't stay and watch you cry, I'll go away, away from here, live my life without fear, just say yes, it's time to go, 3 a.m., no one knows. for you <laughs> yeah all right who who did anybody guess I know I'm expecting too much and I I apologize for that you know it's it's probably hard to tell what the words were anyways it's bullshit <laughs> again I know come on well everything is really both but this one's really bullshit Could easily be a true statement. So the next song is a Bob Dylan song. And uh, we all know who Bob Dylan is, I would think. Probably, right? Um, anyways, Bob Dylan seems like a pretty cool guy. I've never met him almost once, but I'm too lazy to get it go. So I didn't go. Anyways, um, this is a great song. It's, it's off of the Desire album. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. I was exposed to this album a long time ago, back in, not, it, for, it originally came out in like 76, and that's not when I was exposed to it. I was exposed to it like in the 90s, um, early, early 90s, and I always thought this was a great song, um, mostly because it's, it's, because it's a 70s record. It's heavy with the bass, you know, and anytime anything's heavy with the bass, it, dra it draws me in. And it's a very strong bass. So when I started writing songs and I started doing other people's songs, this one came, you know, this one, um, came to me, like I thought of this one because of the strong bass in it, you know? And uh, I, I, I've taken, you know, I think it's cool. I think it's good, you know? Like the other song that's on this album, Desire album, um, is Hurricane, which is a great song. I don't know if you guys heard that Hurricane song. Um, it's a great song. It, it's just, Bob Dylan does such an amazing job telling the story. It's a story of a middleweight uh, boxing champion who gets uh, convicted of, of murder that he didn't actually commit, and he spends many, many years in, in prison. Um, and uh, the song just tells the story so great. So much energy, so much imagery. It's just really done well, and it was really one of my favorite songs for a while. Um, and then they made a movie out of it, of course. And Denzel Washington played the guy. And guess what? It ruined it for me. Like, ruined it. Totally ruined it. I don't... Denzel Washington just ruined it. <laughs> so whenever I hear that song now, I have to, like, forcefully put Denzel Washington out of my head. And that's hard, but I can do it. I've done it successfully a couple times now. <laughs> Anyways, Denzel Washington's not in this song that I'm about to play. Um, he's not, uh, he was not, they didn't make a movie of this one. It's actually a sad song. Um, and so I think that, you know, I don't have much more to say about it. I'm just going to play it and you guys can either dig it or not. It's either way, the, the, it'll happen the way it's supposed to. Um, yeah, it's a cool song. Let me see. It. Let's see if we can get in the in the right mood, in the right zone for it tonight, because it's got a lot of. It's once again like Bob Dylan's imagery, his lyrics is is just it's just phenomenal, you know. I mean, there's a lot of songs that he has that I don't like at all, you know. I'm not a you know I wouldn't call myself a Bob Dylan fan, you know. <laughs> Let's see how it starts. Your breath is 
sweet your eyes are like two jewels in the sky your back is straight your hair is smooth on the pillow where you lie but i don't sense affection no gratitude or love the loyalty is not to me but to the stars above one more cup of coffee for the road To the valley below Your daddy, he's an outlaw A wanderer by trade Teach you how to pick and choose And how to throw the blade He oversees his kingdom no stranger does not true His voice it trembles out As it calls for another plate of food One more cup of coffee for the road One more cup of coffee for I go To the valley below Sees the future like your mama and yourself. You never learn to read or write, there's no books on your shelf. Your pleasure knows no limits, your voice is like a metal law, your heart is like the ocean, mysterious and dark. One more cup of coffee for the road one more cup of coffee for I go to the valley below yeah that's it Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. That's really cool, very kind of you. <laughs> oh yeah, this next one's gonna be a good one though. Wait, the last one was a good one too. So they're all good ones, really. Is there any, ever a time when something on bass happens that it's not good? No, exactly, that's what I thought. <laughs> no, well, I bet I could find, if someone's slapping, then not good. If someone's tapping, not good. <laughs> like, cut that shit out. Just play the damn thing. Don't be such a fancy boy or girl, whatever. Anyways, I, again, I'm showing my strong opinions. Cool. This next one's called 30 Times. It's um, the woman that the song Tragic was written about. It's, this is also written about her. There's something about getting involved. Women are great for writing songs. There's just something about them. Like, especially if it's like you're, it's not going well. Like if it is a, whatever, like, you know, like, you know, things aren't, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a word that I can't think of. So it's, uh, but you know, like when you're, you know, bad shit's happening, somehow, you know, like songs just pour out of me whenever there's like drama involved with some woman, you know? It's pretty crazy, you know? So that's what they're good for. They're good for writing songs. And many other things. <laughs> Whatever.
All right, cool. The, the thing about this one is, and I say it out loud for a reason, um, um, this is called 30 Times, and it's a cool song, but if I get too excited and play it really fast, it loses its coolness, you know, and it just becomes another song, and we don't want that. Not tonight, anyways. I mean, look at us. We, don't, we, we deserve more than that. So uh, the thing is, I have to lay back and sit in the pocket and just let it sort of flow, you know, just sort of like stay on the back and just let it happen for itself and not force the issue. So, and I, oh, the reason I say that out loud is not so much to tell you about it, but it's to remind me to do that. All right? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. It's my favorite time of night right now. Wait, is it two in the morning? Oh, shit. Well, it's almost my time. What time is it? All right, so this is, it's, it's just starting to roll into my favorite time of night, which is 10 to two. Is that night or morning or both? See, that's the way I live. I, I walk on the sides of both of the line, you know, like I'm a morning and night person. <laughs> but what do you do with such information? Nothing. So the next song. The next song is one of my uh, favorite songs because I like playing it and I always end up playing it really fast. Uh, and I don't know, like, uh, it's, I don't have much to say about it. I will tell you that it's not bullshit, though. It actually is, it, the lyrics are based on a real life experience. 
I don't know if that really makes any difference. I just came to say goodbye. I can't say I didn't try. Not to see you, but I have to go. How I live is all I know. Thought it was what I had to do Do you remember that September day? It's got to be a better way I don't know where I go I don't care, I go anywhere I got no words to say Today is just another day We both know that this will pass Peace of mind will never last I don't know where I go I don't care, I go anywhere Yes, that's called, that song is called Where I Go. And we talked about my, type, my name uh, conventions earlier this evening where I just grab the simplest word in a song and that's the name, that's the title. <laughs> if I have to think about it, it's too much time. This next song is an interesting, it's an old, 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 really old, it's a really old song. Uh, and I know that because I, I looked it up and there was a Wikipedia page about it. And the reason I looked it up is because I was exposed to this song um, from Nirvana. Nirvana played this song on their MTV Unplugged thing, it's on their album and whatever. And I thought it was a great song and, I'm a, and so I wanted to do it. Um, so I, I knew it wasn't their song, you know, I knew it wasn't their song, it was obvious, that, you know. And uh, so I was curious where it came from. And um, originally this song, it has many variations, and originally, um, it, it's like from the 18, late 1800s, that's how old this song is. And it's, it's sometimes, you know, so, but the version that Nirvana does is, taken from this version that Lead Belly, this, this blues player Lead Belly does. And um, so they take it from them and I'm taking it from them, but I'm doing my own interpretation, of course, obviously, I can't just let things be. Um, so I'm doing a cover of a cover of a cover. Is that right? Did I get enough covers in there? Um, because, you know, but so it's called, the Nirvana version or the Lead Belly version is called Where Did You Sleep Last Night? It's also been called In the Pines, and I believe there's one other name as well, but I forget. I mean, I can't retain all the information. <laughs> you know, I just can't do it, because I don't want to, and I don't have any interest. Like, once I reach my peak, I, you know, phase it, I gotta go do other things. So I don't even remember what we're talking about. <laughs> it's called Where Did You Sleep Last Night? Let's give it a shot. It's a, it's a cool song. Sleep last night in the pine 
Mountains in the pines where the sun don't shine I shiver the whole night through My girl, my girl, where will you go? I'm a going where the cold wind blows In the pines, in the pines where the sun don't shine I shiver the whole night through Her husband was a hard-working man Who lived by my His head was found in a driving wheel, but his body was never found. My girl, my girl, lie to me. Tell me where did you sleep last night? In the pines, in the pines where the sun don't shine. I shiver the whole night through. My girl, where will you go? I'm a going where the cold wind blows. In the pines, in the pines where the sun don't shine. I will shiver the whole night through. My girl, my girl, don't lie to me. Tell me where did you sleep last night? In the pines, in the pines where the sun don't shine. I shiver the whole night through. My girl, my girl, where will you go? I'm going where the cold wind blows. In the pines, in the pines. Where the sun don't shine I shiver The whole Night through Yeah, there you go Nirvana That's, you know, that it's a funny thing about these, you know, so when someone asks me, like, what do you, you know, what do you do, or whatever, you play, you play acoustic bass, they don't really usually know what you're talking about, you know, but if they do know what you're talking about, hey, see you later, man, um, if they do know what you're talking about, what they think of is MTV Unplugged, because that's the first time most people have ever seen an acoustic bass, even the people that played them, you know, they didn't fucking know, I mean, oh, I was watching my language tonight, Jesus. Anyways, <laughs> the point is, uh, those MTV Unplugged series actually were pretty cool. You know, I mean, especially the Nirvana one, because the songs, like, their songs, like, carried through. Like, they were still great songs without being super heavy, you know. And this is, I always picture it, like, some, like, low, low-level intern, you know, said to his boss, like, hey, man, why don't we get, you know, those grunge bands to play acoustic, you know, it'd be really cool. And the guy was probably like, no, shut up, get out of here, go back to work, get out of here. And then he goes to his boss, like, hey, let's, what do you think about getting the grunge bands, you know, play acoustic? And the guy was probably like, yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, cool. That's the way I picture MTV working. That is the best, yeah. You know, I mean, see, Alice and Jane, and you know what's sad, though, about the grunge era? So many people have died. It's so sad. Like, did we know that when it was happening? Yes, we did. And it's a sad circumstance. Let's not get all down. I mean, we'll show our props to the people that died, and, and they have great music, and we respect that, and we want that. And I tell you, that empty, the Nirvana one is great because he exposed a lot of people that have, are clueless, have no idea, to lots of new music. Not just the Nirvana music, but he played a ton of covers and uh, had a couple guys from the Meat Men come up and 
I'm sorry, I don't want to go too far on it. All right, so I think it's safe to say that I have one more. I think that's probably safe, right? Anyone have an objection with that? We could do, I think it's cool, right? I'm down with that. I got, I mean, I was going to do two, but one of them is like a sensitive, quiet song. And I don't, you know, I'm not feeling the room for that. The room's not giving me the vibe for that. Oh, but before we do, we gotta finish, otherwise. Nah, I don't feel like doing it. All right, cool. I'm just getting warmed up, so uh, after I'm done here, we're gonna go play someone's living room, I guess. Who? Someone raise their hand. <laughs> Mm. All right. What's this, what song have we not done yet? Yeah, that's the one we're skipping. Oh, you want to hear it, don't you? Oh, shit. <laughs> I was all psyched about skipping it. But I will play it for you. That's fine. I will definitely play it for you. It's a short song. It's fine. All right. I know, I know you did. I came from Maine too. <laughs> I'm like, that's not, a, you know. All right, so let's get quiet and sensitive for a minute, and then we're going to play a song that's not quiet and sensitive. You're welcome. Think of me, 
Yeah, I like that song too, Tiffany. That's a good song. I like that. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, this next song. Yeah. One more. Yeah, yeah just one more. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> All right, I'll give you, all right, one more song. This one is the most recent, I just recorded it. It just got released on the spot, the streaming things with the ones and zeros and all the quantum mechanics that we talked about. Um, and there's a video out, there's two videos out actually, because the first one, Sony Music Entertainment uh, blocked because I used clips from one of their videos, I guess. So it's fine, I was like, okay, whatever, I'll make a new one. So I did. And so there's two videos now. How does this start, though? That's what's important, is to start at the beginning. Anyone? Now I wanted it to do any good. 
don't take me away, just give me one more day. Live my life best I could. Now I want it to ain't good. <laughs> Oh, it's a good time. I had a lot of fun tonight. It's all because of you guys. Like, literally, it's because of you guys, you know? Like, I wouldn't have had this much fun by myself, that's for sure. Uh, I know that for a fact. So thank you for hanging, chilling, being cool, um, making jokes, laughing, <laughs> laughing at my jokes, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> All right. All right, so, oh. So the thing is, right, I mean, I don't, I don't want to, all right, I know. Sorry about that. So the thing is, uh, I don't want to self-promote or whatever, but I know you're all asking yourselves right now, how did I not know about this? Like, oh my God, I had no idea that this was happening, and I'm just lucky enough to be here. Well, good. that's great. You're actually a very lucky person. That's cool. But you don't have to leave it to chance. You can get involved. You can join. Um, you know, you can do all that follow, like, subscribe stuff, which I, you know, you know, as much as we don't want to do, you know, a lot of the social engineering and science and all that stuff, um, it does keep us, you know, it keeps it. So next show, you would, you would be like on the first to know about it. You'd be like, oh, my God, uh, uh, Jarvis is playing again, you know. And uh, that's cool. But if you don't want that, you're like, hey, I, I hate social media, and I don't, I'm not going to do that. You can actually sign up for on the um, the email list, and you get a like a personalized email telling you when the next show is, if I remember to do it, which doesn't always happen, but <laughs> but it's better chance than nothing, right? I mean, it's a very, it's you know, like maybe you'll get told about it. <laughs> All right, be cool. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. I'm not, you know what I'm not going to tell you? It's a tip for your bartenders and waitresses. Because if you don't know that at this point in your life, you're a freaking idiot. <laughs> Abe, thanks a lot tonight. Sounded great, man. I appreciate it. Since it's real. 